Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Well, we can like uh, kind of move our chairs. You guys in the back can come forward a little bit and. Uh, Praise the Lord. I'm going to pray as you move your chairs. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is full of light, your life. Your word is full of power, your power. Your word is full of light, your life. Father, we thank you that when your word comes in, light comes in, direction comes in, understanding comes in. And Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over our time together tonight. We thank you that uh, we have come to meet with you and you have come to meet with us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Alrighty. Praise the Lord. Is this your last Wednesday? Since there's no Wednesday this week. Maybe. 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 Right, We're gonna uh, look at two passages. Well, we're gonna look at a lot of passages of scripture. Uh, I'm gonna start out with uh, John 10:10, 10, 10, and then uh, we're gonna go to Acts chapter 27. Spend some time in Acts chapter 27, and. Uh, John 10, 10, the thief uh, comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Uh, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, Jesus said. So, <laughs> the thief has come uh, to do what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said he has come uh, that we might have life and have it in abundance or have it overflowing. Amplified says the thief uh, comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I am come that you may enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. And so, uh, you know, sometimes in life, uh, especially if you have a busy life, it's easy to get going and, you know, put the things of God second <laughs> or third or just way down the list and not have those things first. But uh, Jesus, Jesus' way is a better way. His is a way of life, not just any kind of life, the God kind of life. It's a way of abundance. And so if you get out of that way, I think I read in uh, Proverbs on Sunday that the backslider is full of his own ways. So the backslider in Proverbs says that he's, he's full of his own ways. So you got to be careful of being full of your own ways. And, um, you know, he whom the Son of God has set free is the one that's really free. You'll know the truth. The truth will set you free and make you free. And uh, to live an abundant life, you really have to make Jesus Lord and receive the freedom that only he gives. So you have freedom from um, performance. You have freedom from um, habits. You have freedom from yourself, actually. You said, well, I don't need freedom from myself. Well, you need freedom from your flesh, and uh, you need freedom from your unrenewed mind, and you need freedom from uh, pleasing others. You know, the Lord told Jeremiah, don't be afraid of their faces. And so, uh, you know, you can apply that to your life many times. Like, what, what is, what's everybody's face? Like, right now, look at everybody's face. Just put a smile on your face. Uh, so Jesus came that we would have life and have it more abundantly. So his life doesn't take away, doesn't steal, doesn't kill, doesn't destroy. It actually does the opposite. So he's opposing what the enemy did to what he came to do and what the enemy does. So, uh, you know, Jesus said in John chapter 3, verse 14, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up. So just like Moses, remember he, uh, you know, they were all snake bit because uh, they were whining and complaining. <laughs> so I uh, know none of you ever whine or complain. <laughs> I have once in my life, a few times, you know, multiple times. So sometimes you catch yourself and then sometimes your family catches you. <laughs> What's wrong? Nothing. Right? Well, I can, I can tell you nothing's wrong. And so, uh, anyhow, they got snake bit, and uh, the remedy was to uh, carve a brass, a serpent on a brass pole. So, uh, uh, 
was a brass serpent on that pole. And if anyone who looked with a steady, uh, constant, absorbing gaze, Amplified Translation said, would live. So they wrote the song called Look and Live. Look and live, my brother, live. Look to Jesus now. So that was a type of Jesus to come. And then he brings it up here in John chapter 3 when Nicodemus is asking him, you know, uh, right after this, like, how, how can a man, um, you know, be born again? Actually, right before that, he's asking it. And so he said, uh, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up. And then over uh, in verse 12, he said, And if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And I lift it up, of course, he's in, in I don't think I finished that. Uh, Amplified says, And I, if I am and when I am lifted up from the earth on the cross, will draw and attract all men, Gentiles as well as Jews, to myself. And the, when the word lifted up is, is literally physically lifted up, but it also has to do with being exalted and uh, being glorified and magnified. So one of the greatest freedoms, ways to access freedom in your life is to magnify the Lord Jesus. Magnify the Lord Jesus to others, but especially to yourself. If you magnify the Lord Jesus to yourself, it's going to be automatic to magnify Him to others. Like He knows more than I know. He has more experience than I have. He has more wisdom than I have. When I don't know what to do, I go to him. And when I know what, when I think I know what to do, I especially go to him. <laughs> I don't know if everybody's getting that, but thank you for your laugh, Dave. Um, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So uh, let's go to, well, I'm going to finish up in John chapter 3, and then we'll go to Acts 27. So he said, and Moses as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So it's interesting. They, they uh, believed in the serpent in the wilderness and they had life, but they didn't have Zoe life or everlasting life. And Jesus came and said, hey, that's just like a type of shadow of the real. I am the real. Uh, when I be lifted up, whoever believes in me will have everlasting life everlasting life so you know life is the life of god the nature of god and so it's pretty sweet that we don't have uh the life of god just for a season or just for a moment uh but it's everlasting from everlasting to everlasting and um if you uh mix faith with that it'll affect your life your daily life okay that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life uh, in verse 5 he said uh, I say to you except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of God so really there's uh, two births every person really should experience two births uh, born in waters like the water of the womb uh, but then born of the Spirit, literally it means born from above, or here it's born of the pneuma. So the Holy Spirit recreates you in Christ Jesus, and uh, you become uh, uh, one with God, and uh, your spirit is recreated. You're recreated, you have a brand new spirit. And that's where you hear from God, that's where you communicate with God, um, that's where you fellowship with God. So God is not, um, God um, has thoughts and is full of wisdom, but he is not a mind. So God is not, um, you don't uh, hear from God through reason or deduction or, um, you know, the thoughts of other people. God's a spirit. Uh, John, you know, John is such an amazing uh, gospel. We, if we went over John chapter 4, like verse 24, so, uh, Jesus said, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, for he seeks such to worship him. And so uh, God's a spirit. He's not a mind and he's not a body. So you're not going to contact God uh, through the realm of your senses. So if I'm trying to hear from God, I'm not looking for a sensory response. Well, one sensory response is like an audible voice. So I'm not looking for an audible voice to hear from God. 
Um, Paul said, we're going to look at that, and we're going to kind of focus on uh, part of the scripture here, but in Acts 27, uh, Paul said, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage is going to be basically uh, have a lot of trouble and uh, disaster with it. And then when he said, I perceive, uh, it's kind of like um, I'm impressed, you know. So you see, like, uh, if I did that, I pressed my, well, it's not working. I can press my fingernails. They're too short. I need somebody with long fingernails. But I, I could leave like a mark in my skin and there's an impression there. But it's not the real. It's not as distinct as, my, as actually my fingernails are, if they were long enough to do that. Um, but there's an impression. And so uh, many cases, uh, the leading of the Lord and hearing from the Lord is just that. It's an impression. So I'm impressed to do this. I'm impressed to give this to you. I'm impressed to go to this place. So he said, sirs, I perceive. Um, didn't say I know. He said, I perceive. And uh, But sometimes we describe it as a knowing. It's a knowing on the inside. It's an inward witness. Um, but it is... Um, of your spirit. And so with your spirit, you contact the realm of the spirit. Uh, being born again is a spiritual experience. It is not a natural experience. And uh, if you're kind of looking for natural, that's okay. You're just like Nicodemus who thought he could go back into his, he, Jesus was saying, you're supposed to go back into your mother's womb, you know. And uh, maybe my mind was a little bit like his, you know, analytical, like, okay, how is this going to be possible? You have like some special stretching lotion or something like that or you know like how's that going to happen and um well he he was not spiritual nicodemus knew the scriptures but was not spiritual a man does not become spiritual until he is born again what the bible calls spiritual some people say well like witches are spiritual no they're in the the negative spiritual realm they deal with some of those things but they're not spiritual according to what the bible calls spiritual um so you become a spiritual being when you're born again. You're born again spiritual. So you don't have to try to get spiritual. You are spiritual. But what you have to do is you contact God with your spirit, not your body. So you got to get your body quiet. you got to get your mind quiet. And uh, you open your spirit and your heart to the Lord. And that's where you hear from God. Um, and that's where he contacts you. Okay, so let's go over to Acts chapter 27 with that. Uh, introduction laid and um, we're going to read uh, quite a little bit here and James I think I'm reading in the New King James if you're if you're here tonight online is he online that's why did I say James I think I said James James thank you James verse 9 starting with verse 9 well, you know me. Yeah, nine's a good place to start. Now, when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them. Um, and I, I said that, I read it in actually in the King James. <laughs> Paul admonished them, and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, or literally in the margin it says injury, not only to the lading, anybody know what lading is? That's all the cargo. Uh, not only to the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven, uh, let me go to New King James here. Verse 11, nevertheless, the centurion was more persuaded by the helmsman and the owner of the ship than by the things Paul said. And because the harbor was not suitable to winter in, the majority advised to set sail from there also. That is so good. We should just take a vote to decide what we should do. Because, I mean, we're in America, so it's a democracy. It's actually a republic. 
So, uh, you know, it says it's of the people, by the people, for the people. And so that mentality creeps into the church sometimes and it creeps, it creeps into your walk with the Lord. And it's kind of like, well, let's just all whatever the majority says, that's what we should do. That's got to be what, what God says. The problem with that is if you look in the scriptures, normally the majority is against God. <laughs> uh, and because the harbor wasn't suitable. So uh, being born again is a spiritual experience. So if you have been born again, you have become spiritual and you have had the greatest spiritual experience already. And so you're actually created to respond spiritually and you've done the, the greatest response you could ever do. So, um, you know, don't get uh, all worked up about it. It's uh, you're, you're already created spiritual. So you got the biggest uh, challenge taken care of. And because the harbor was not suitable to winter and the majority advised to set sail from there also. Well, so the majority wasn't like, we just want to go. It's because the harbor was not suitable to winter in. They're like, well, we can't stay here. You know, the weather, the storms are coming. It's going to get bad. We can't stay here all winter. We have to go. We, we really have to go. And so they based their decision on reason and experience. The experience of the sailors, the experience, their own experience, like the storms come that time of year. So I was uh, on a TDY over there um, uh, that time of year. And, uh, uh, but I was in uh, Italy, so his next stop after he shipwrecked, you know. So uh, they let loose from Crete, and they go, and the storm comes, and, uh, you know, an angel uh, stands by him and tells him, hey, uh, you know, you're going to lose the whole ship and everything on it, but uh, because uh, you have an assignment to go to Rome, I'm going to spare your life and everybody with you. Uh, and then he's, if we have some time in a minute, we'll read the rest of it. He said a few other things. So uh, the ship went and they're like, okay, we're going to put it up because it was uh, falling apart. We're going to put it up on the um, sandbar outside of, uh, where's our friend from? Uh, Martin from, um, I'll have to look it up, Malta. So the ship, the shipwrecked on the sands, sandbar of Malta. And then they got off and, and uh, Malta is where they got off and that's where he got uh, snake bit. And then from there, uh, they sailed on over to uh, Pozzoli, Italy, which the Bible calls Puteoli. And so we've been there and uh, saw where he landed, and they named a church after him. And then from there, he traveled to Rome. But he had an assignment to go to Rome. He had to testify of Christ before the Roman centurion. So the Lord said, I've given you uh, everyone on the ship and your own life. And so, you know, the will and plan of God uh, still came to pass, but they just had a lot of trouble they wouldn't have had to have. But you see, because they knew, like, it's, it's too late. So what I want to focus on right now is verse 9. This is one of the greatest ways to miss God. Now, when much time had been spent. Did you ever notice that? Now, when much time had been spent, I believe you could also say, now when much or many resources had been spent. Well, th th why is that there? Because the Holy Spirit uh, inspired him to put that there. Now, when much time had been spent. So they're running late. It, you, ever, you ever do something and it, took longer and cost more than what you thought, than what you planned. Most, most major things, right? That's why actually when you build a house, they have something called contingency. They'll put a 15% contingency in there. And now they actually add an additional contingency on top of that because inflation has been so wild. But they have just a regular building contingency because they know like, oh, you're going to change some decisions and some things are going to cost more than what we, when we check prices now. So there's a, a contingency. And so, um, when much time had been spent and sailing was now dangerous, so, so they're already behind schedule and they've already gotten to a place of danger. So, it's a place of danger for you or for me when you're like under pressure because you're late or because things are already in motion and you wanted to have uh, already uh, been at a certain place in your life, been at a certain place in your journey, you know, uh, maybe it's a, 
a vacation, maybe it's a job, maybe it's, you know, a move, maybe it doesn't really matter what it is. Um, but you ever notice uh, you don't hear from the Lord very easily in a pressure situation. And so when much time had been spent, now when much time had been spent, um, man is a spirit, but he has a soul and he lives inside of a body. Now, um, uh, we just went to an amusement park maybe a couple weeks ago. And uh, I haven't been to amusement park in nine years. Something I just didn't think of, but my children pointed out to me, and then I saw it, was like, you know, you see these roller coasters go by, and like, well, you can stand on the ground next to them. The whole ground shakes and moves. Well, the whole roller coaster, you can see it moving, right? So some of my kids were a little concerned about that. I'm like, oh, that's normal, you know. If they didn't do that, they'd probably break. Uh, so an airplane wing is the same way. You know, those airplane wings are actually only attached with two big bolts and skin, and they flex. And if they didn't flex, they would shear off and you would crash. So when you see them flexing and it makes you nervous, just be like, I'm so, so glad those things move. Um, <laughs> so when, when you're like late, behind where you wanted to be, you know, that roller coaster is going by and I'm affected by that thing moving and the tracks are affected by that thing moving. Well, I, I live in a body and so my body affects me. I, the, the body has an effect on me. For instance, I get hungry. I have to use the restroom, you know, and sometimes like even that's the most urgent thing. And uh, it doesn't really uh, matter that you are a spirit. Your body is communicating with you that it has needs and it has desires and it's not comfortable and it's tired. And, you know, uh, it doesn't want to exercise. Right. Um, and so we are a spirit. We don't contact God with our bodies. We contact God with our spirits. Uh, and being born again is a spiritual experience and God is in the realm of the spirit. And so I'm not using my body to contact the Lord. I'm actually uh, getting my body in a position where it doesn't distract me from listening to God. And then I have a mind. And so in mind, will and emotions is the soul. What the Bible refers to as the soul realm. Some cases when it's saying soul, it's talking about spirit, but uh, when Paul said, I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless to the Thessalonians, uh, spirit, soul and body there in your soul. He's talking about your mind, which is where reasonings happen, your will and your emotions. And so you are I am affected by my emotions. They affect me. I am aware of my emotions. Uh, in uh, many cases, you will make it more, much more difficult for yourself if you pretend like you don't have emotions because you think that is the spiritual response. It'll be much, more, much better to be aware of your emotions, aware of the desires of your flesh, so that you can properly deal with those things. And you can understand, hey, uh, I, I'm going to have emotions when this happens. When my kids leave, you know, go to college, when... when uh, my family leaves when I go see my family, when I move, when somebody leaves the church, you know, like there's emotions, right? And um, you, you want to be aware of your emotions so that you're not driven by your emotions and you don't make uh, decisions because of your emotions. The only decision you should really make because of your emotions is I'm going to really press in hard right now. I'm going to get beyond these emotions. I'm not going to let these emotions dominate me. I am a spirit. I hear from the Lord. And, um, you know, I contact him with my spirit. And so uh, if you're not aware, you may... Um, 
to get in like a swimming pool and you think, first of all, you jump in and you're like, this thing is cold. But then if you're in there for a little bit and it's not actually cold, it's like 80 some degrees and you're like, oh, oh, actually, this isn't too bad, especially as you move around. But then if you stay in there long enough, you get hypothermia at 85 degrees in 85 degree water. You stay in there for like, I think it's, was it four hours or something? Navy guy might know or something like that. But, you know, we watch these Coast Guard rescue things and they show people getting hypothermia in the waters of Florida in the summer. So you stay there long enough, you can get hypo because anything below your body temperature will slowly cool you off. But because the water is warm feeling, you won't notice it. And so sometimes with your emotions, if you don't like prepare ahead of time, like, OK, hey, I, this is going to be kind of an emotional experience for me. So let me find some of word of life, the words of God that will be my anchor and steady me in this thing that's coming. You know, uh, Kenneth Hagin Sr., when his mother passed away, his father left when he was six years old and, um, you know, just left the family. And uh, later his father went on to become a pastor and he was a Southern Baptist pastor when he passed away. Anyhow, uh, so he did get born again and, and, and all that, but not while he was young. And so because of that, you know, people treated him like he was an orphan. You don't have a daddy and made fun of him. And then he was also very sick when he was young and couldn't do much. So, you know, the people who feel like they're really strong bullies would beat him up and pick on him and those type of things. And so because of that, uh, his mother was very special to him. And, um, you know, when she passed away, he was there with her at her bed and, um, uh, his son said, uh, I heard dad, when mom passed, when grandma passed away, I heard him say, just the second she passed on, out of his mouth, just real quiet, I heard him say, oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? I think that's like Paul here when he said, uh, sirs, wherefore I, sirs, I believe God, be of good cheer. It'll be just the way it was said to me. I think he set his course with his mouth because he knew there was going to be a lot of emotion involved and uh, he knew his mother was, was getting ready to die. So as soon as she passed, instead of getting overcome, overwhelmed with the emotions, he spoke the word, which then gave him the ability to stand upon that word. And that was really, you know, a confession is really a declaration. Like I'm putting a stake in the ground. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So in this case, as for me, I am saying death is not the end. Death will not have victory. I'm going to see my mama again, right? Because in times like that, you need to be aware. And you, you know, if you try to be a, a super person, um, Christ has made in Christ, uh, his life in you and his power in you is super. But you're, you really don't become super. I mean, a new creation is in God's likeness and image, and it's pretty amazing. But it's in your union with Christ. It's because of His life in you and His Spirit in you. You know, when the Holy Spirit's come upon you, you will receive power. And so, you know, um, uh, when you get born again, it's easy to have a mindset of, uh, you know, The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Well, he's seeing you contact God with your what? When you're born again, it's what kind of experience? So he's seeing into the realm of the Spirit. So when he says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation, he's talking about man's spirit is a new creation. Your flesh is not a new creation, and your mind is not a new creation. Your flesh must be crucified and your mind must be renewed. With, and the only way to renew it is with the word. You don't renew it by reasonings. You renew it with the word of God by receiving the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul, James said. Their, their soul is talking about your mind, your will, your emotions, able to save your soul. What is the engrafted word? What's engrafting? Well, there first must be a wound or a cut. 
And then once there's a wound or a cut, then the new uh, vine can be put into that wound or cut. And actually, interesting, the, 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 the trunk or the vine must be cut or wounded. But the branch to be placed in there must be severed from its old life and placed into the new life. So you must die. And then you're placed where Christ was cut. You're placed into Him. And then that life, you're engrafted into Christ. Now you have a source of life. But this is in your spirit. This is in the realm of the spirit. So it's the inward man, the inward part of who you are. And so, um, but you must crucify your flesh and you must renew your mind. And uh, when you have a renewed mind, your, your mind, uh, your will is connected to your mind and your mind, if it's not changed, even though your spirit rejoices or like Brother Hay would say, like turns flips at what the word says and what God says, if your mind is not renewed, you will side in with your mind against your own spirit. You know, like uh, if, if your, your mind, uh, I had a friend, I still have a friend. I don't talk to him about it ever, but uh, he was a paramedic. And for him, uh, divine healing was a very difficult subject because he was trained and had experienced so much medicine as the only way for help. So for him, it took him, uh, man, a long time, maybe 15 years to be able to uh, uh, renew his mind to divine health and divine medicine. And uh, it, it took him longer because uh, he, he leaned that way. So even though he believed it and he saw it in the word, you know, mentally, but before he could get that block out of his mind in the renewing process, it would stop him every time from acting in faith. And so... Uh, you know, uh, Kenneth Hagin said multiple times, the most important thing is to get your mind renewed. You must get your mind renewed. And uh, one of the greatest ways to do that is to be filled with the Spirit because then the Word comes so alive, you're like, oh, I want more, I want more, I want more. And uh, so it's so good. Um, now, when much time was spent... Uh, you know, I'm trying to think of the best example. You know, um, oh, so uh, when we first were uh, planting the church here, um, we needed, uh, we were, we were a uh, horrible church like we are today, but changing soon in Jesus' name. Uh, but uh, the, the trucks were, I think, your car, our van, and uh, maybe your, your vehicle. I don't know what, what stage it was. Keith and Stacy's probably. And then uh, we rented a little U Haul trailer and we towed a little U Haul trailer. And then um, we got to where we needed uh, something bigger. And uh, the thing with needing something bigger is you must have something to pull something bigger. And uh, so I was looking and it was like kind of a lot more than what I wanted to spend on a, a truck. And then I'm such a long term planner. I'm like, well, I'm not going to get like a, you know, half ton truck because I, I can only tow so much. And we that's what we have now. But that's not going to stay that way. So I thought, OK, I need like a three quarter ton or a one ton truck. So uh, I didn't want to deal with rust being from the Midwest. I was very familiar with rust. So I found one out in California and uh, uh, out in Fresno, California. Never been to Fresno before that. It was a wonderful thing. We went and saw the sequoia trees. Evie came with me. And so uh, we flew out there together uh, to get this truck. And um, I figured it would take me, if I really push it, maybe four days to get back. You know, but it was like, I don't know. 3,500 miles. It's a pretty long way. And so uh, 
we, we, uh, we go and I get out there and the guy doesn't have the, the title. So I know I have to go to the DMV and I contacted the DMV ahead of time and how to get a replacement title and, and, and uh, all of that. And so we go and like, I mean, it's the DMV, but it's California. And so it was like two hour wait. And we wait two hours. We get up there and then they're like, oh, well, you need, of course, other stuff. And I'm like, well, listen, I, I'm like, I live in Virginia. And so long story short, I think it took us four or five hours at the DMV, maybe six. And then I found out that the cruise control was not working on it. So I found a dealer real quick and I got a, them to, praise the Lord, put a cruise control in that afternoon. And then uh, uh, something else wasn't right with it. I can't remember, but it was something like the cruise I didn't want to deal with because I knew I was driving 3,000, like 500 miles. And I'm like, oh man, you know, that's going to get real tiring. And so I um, had a few other things. So we're delayed. And um, uh, I think we had to spend the night and we did it the next day. So we're still in that day, ran along. And so then it's getting dark and I wanted to take her to see the big sequoia trees. So we go, it's right at dusk, looking at the sequoia trees. And, and uh, then I'm like, well, I really wanted to leave already. But I thought, well, we should just leave in the morning because it's already late. And I think we waited till the morning and left, if I remember right. So we go, we start driving. It's beautiful through California and then Nevada and then Utah and Colorado. And I think it was end of Colorado or beginning of Kansas or something like that. Somewhere in there. Oh, man, I started to get sick. And I was not feeling well. And she was, how old are you now, 16? So she was like uh, about... Uh, eight at the time, seven or eight years old. So she can't help me drive. <laughs> and, uh, you know, she's just looking, having a good time. And, and, uh, so I'm like, Oh no. And, uh, I mean, there's so many, I want to make this story too long. So I'll skip over some stuff. So we go and we go to my, uh, I'm like, well, we have to get back, you know? And I think there were, I don't know, 25 people attending the church. And I'm like, I have to get back because we have to set up and do all this stuff. And I really should have just not been under the pressure. But I'm like, well, I have to get back. I have to go. So I, I get to my friend's house in um, Nebraska. And we spent the night there. And, uh, man, I, I, I had gotten so, so sick. And um, I'm stressed out because I'm way behind schedule. And I'm like, I have got to get back in time. Well, what's going to, so what does this scripture say? Where did I read it at? It says, uh, now when much time was spent, you know. So I'm in the basement of my friend's house. I get in his bathtub because I was just felt horrible. I think I was achy and stuff. And so I, um, I fall asleep in the bathtub full of water. And I only wake up when I'm choking on the water. <laughs> And nobody knew I was in the bath there. They were all upstairs or whatever. I was like, well, I'm going to go rest. And uh, so, uh, you know, it, it could have cost me my life. And uh, uh, just because I had to get where I was going to go. And uh, the thing that happens with many people, especially if you haven't developed a lifestyle of... Uh, trust in the Lord and refusing to respond to the pressure situations and come under it is you have a natural determination. Have you ever noticed like sometimes things start going wrong and you're just like, you buckle down and you make it so much worse. <laughs> you know, you're kind of like, I was supposed to leave yesterday, so I'm leaving tonight. Oh, I'm picking on Brandon. And so... <laughs> So, but you're just like, I really don't care. I am going. Well, I put something in my notes about that. Um, I said, look out when you are delayed. Pay close attention to your spirit. Because you're, you're entering dangerous territory. Because your, your determination and your hardness will actually um, cut off your listening to the Lord. Because you have decided you have to do this. You did this not looking unto Jesus, you did this, no, I've got to do this. I've got to do this because you have decided this because much time had been spent. And so um, 
that's a very dangerous thing to do. So what we want to do is stop, submit ourselves to the Lord, and ask the Lord. And you, 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 with an understanding of you have emotions and you have reasonings and you have a body that's going to try to affect you. Well, if you understand that, then you could understand my perspective at this moment is this has to be done now. But I have experienced this before in my life and I have seen the mercy of the Lord, and I have experienced like really bad things happening. Uh, I got another one. So we bought a motorhome and um, I come up with a lot of motorhome stories. And so uh, it was delayed, the purchase of it, you know, I needed a, a, for an office. And so it was delayed. And so we're not, I don't travel on Saturdays. You might not know that some people do, but I, I don't like, cause I'm preparing to minister, prepare my heart, all of that. I'm not, you know, uh, most of the time I, have, I know the message, but I'm still like just praying and really just, you know, I don't know if you talk to a lot of pastors, it's pretty normal. So I end up having to drive home because it's late on a Saturday. And uh, because things took longer than they were supposed to. What did that scripture say? Now, when much time was spent. So I took and I thought, well, I, I, I am... Um, I'm going to have a mechanic look at this. So I went to a diesel mechanic as a diesel truck and had them give it the once over younger guy, but I'm like, okay. And he looks at everything and inspects it. Oh, looks good. How are the tires? Oh, everything look, looks good. Okay. My dad says, um, you know, uh, you should check the air in the tires. And I thought I should, but I'm in a big hurry and I'm trying to do this and this and this, and I'm trying to get used to this thing. It's pretty big. And, and I thought, well, the mechanic, I just had it inspected. Surely they checked the air in the tires. And um, so to make a long story short, we're coming home. Uh, uh, we left pretty early because it was a Saturday. But we're coming home and we blow a tire. And I think, you know, uh, that the axle, rear axle has like busted and hit up because the kids all screamed. And my wife it was like, it was like an explosion, like, go, boom. And I thought, what on earth? You know, so I pull over and, you know, we had purchased roadside and everything. So everything like that. And so, uh, you know, they came. It took two hours. It wasn't a long period of time. It was like 90 some degrees outside. So, it, the, you know, it was hot. The tires that ended up being underinflated and the tires were 17 years old. Well, I don't know too much, but I know enough that if the mechanic who was inspecting it said your tires are 17 years old, I would have been like, you need to replace these tires or I'm not buying this, you know, uh, but I was in a hurry. So I didn't need to stop and listen to my wisdom from my father. Uh, and, uh, you know, you kind of have like a little thing on the inside, but you're like, well, I, I got to go. I am determined again. I have to be here on a Sunday. And so, uh, might not be more important than your life, but you might feel like it is. Uh, so when much time had been spent, I just love that that is right there in the scripture because all of us have experienced that. And, um, you know, you, you get in a hurry and, uh, you can miss God so easily. You're made to hear from God. But when you get that, you kind of have this um, mental determination that comes and it affects your emotions. And so you want to be conscious. Uh, what is uh, the Bible says that man's frame is weak. So you have to understand you're, you are a weak being. I am a weak being. But he didn't say you're a weak being in your determination. His strength is made perfect. He said, in your weakness, my strength is made perfect. So he's like, Lord, I feel like I have to go right now. Um, if you do this on a daily basis, it's going to be a lot easier when a big pressure situation comes. If you develop this in you, how do you develop it? Well, like, um, how do you learn to do uh, soccer? What? Practice. You, you keep doing it. And uh, 
you know, how you learn to, to do golf, hit the sweet spot, you have to keep practicing. You have to learn. A lot of times you learn more by what doesn't work <laughs> than by what does. Because it worked. You're like, but how did it work? I don't know. Like, it just like magic. It just worked. So, so we, we developed this in our, in our own life, in our own being, so that uh, when that time comes, and then you look at your history, what kind of person are you? Like, I'll tell you, when I move, I'm very emotional when I move. So I have learned when I move, boy, you, 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 you can't just think of the emotion whatsoever. Because the emotion will say like, why are you doing this? Where are you at? You, da, 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 you know, boom, it's like bombard you. And uh, if I focused on that and looked to that, it would move me. It would make me unsteady and unstable. And then I'm in a really bad place because I'm not in faith. I'm not trusting the Lord. Uh, so I like just kind of like the, all those voices and emotions and thoughts. I kind of like put to the side. And then I'm like, well, this is what God said. I don't know anything else. I don't understand all this other stuff, all these inputs. But I know this is what God said. And so I, I'm going with this. And then I also have an understanding of um, this has happened many times before. So in a day or two or tomorrow or maybe later, it's the emotion will change. Emotions are very fickle. And, um, you know, uh, it's like uh, losing your cell phone or losing something that's kind of like you really need at the moment. Right. And of course, much time has been spent. So I need this now. I've been looking for this for like 10 minutes. Like I, I need it. I need it. And uh, you start to act very inappropriately because you can't find this thing that's so important to you. First world problem. Right? But most of us have done that. And then your wife finds it or your husband finds it or your kid finds it or it just shows up. And then you feel like kind of foolish. Oh, why was that? That was like, I was not really trusting the Lord. Like, why was I so worked up about that? It's like, you know, not a big deal. And, well, that could tell you two things. Uh, number, number one, you should look at the big picture and say, like, why is that thing so important to me? That's a long-term development thing. <laughs> uh, but number two, you just learn, like, hey, I, I'm going to have these experiences where I'm going to feel like this is the most important thing right now. But I know the most important thing is to draw near to God and look to the Lord and cast my cares on the Lord and get beyond all of the fog and the smoke and the haze and the lights and the fog screen and just like believe God, look to God because um, when you have decided to do something, no matter what happens, you have shut down the voice of God in your life. You know, because His voice is like more like an impression most of the time. And it's, it's a little subtle. So if I took, if I had like a, 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 a stamp, you know, and I could put it here in my arm so you could actually see a, maybe a brand, like a, a cattle brand, and I could put it here because it has very more distinct lines. Still, there's going to be things in that brand that they're going to show up right at the beginning. You ever get that? Like the Lord speaks to you, it's like crystal clear. And then other stuff starts happening and it's like, well, it's still there, but it's not quite as clear. It seems like uh, it's fading. Um, well, because you start looking to other things. And so, uh, you know, one of the ways to develop your spirit is to instantly obey the voice of the Lord. That you, as soon as he speaks, then I, I always try to write it down. Or record it. I don't want to let it go. Uh, let it get away from me. Uh, because sometimes uh, things will get away from you. Um, especially if much time has been spent and you have lots of things to do that, that, that you need to do. So um, you, you just avoid that mentality. Now you can take that in the things you get from God. And then channel what you got from God with that determination that you're, you're, you have as a human, that you're like, you know, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Wherefore, sirs, I believe God. 
um, go in this direction. But you notice, even when I say that versus the other determination, I don't know if you, you probably would notice if you check in your spirit, it actually is very uh, liberty. It's like open, it's free. When I say the things of God in that determination versus the other things, like I have to get to this place at this time, I have to do this. It's actually rigid. It's actually like um, constricting. It's actually like being a slave. Like you're, you're like stuck in that. And so um, as you develop a daily lifestyle of that, it, it, it'll become easier and easier. And then you keep the awareness of your own weaknesses and your own uh, things where you're challenged. You know, we're all challenged in different areas and sometimes similar areas. And so you just know like, hey, um, this is going to be a challenging time for me with reasonings and emotions, for instance. And so I, I, I'm going to like make an extra determination to be quick to hear and slow to speak. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually write it in my journal, like in capital, bold, highlight. Like, I am following the Lord no matter what anybody says. Or in other words, I'll set my course like Kenneth Hagin did with his mouth. I'll set it with my mouth, but then I write it down so that I know like on my journey, or you can write yourself a note that you know you're going to find, you know, like if you're preparing, like you guys are moving or something like that. So you could put it uh, and your stuff that you unpack, you put it in your truck. Uh, when you move, Brandon, you could do that. Um, uh, you could put it on your windshield. Um, but you could put it a, lo a lot of different places so you remember, like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I need help. You're, you're weak, you're frail, but the Lord provides strength and direction and help in your time of need. So if you look to Him in the time of need, He will help you. But the problem is we were so determined, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, I look at all the men in here, but I'm sure the ladies are the same, but especially like if you're moving furniture and uh, you're kind of like, somebody's like, you need some help? I, I got it. Well, then, especially if somebody asks you for help, you know, you have to complete that whole thing on your own. <laughs> right? Male ego. So, you know, even like you can feel it's like hurting your back or doing something or whatever. Maybe once you're 40, you could feel that. Um, but you're like, well, I will do it. I will do it. And my wife's like, you need help? No, baby, I got it. Your arms are shaking. Oh, maybe. Okay, maybe. Uh, okay. Look out when you're delayed and pay close attention to the Spirit. Um, look inward. Uh, and then I put here, be cautious of the outward determination in that time. Look inward and laugh. Right? So when you feel that pressure coming on, much time has been spent. Look to the inside, to your own Spirit and the Spirit of God and laugh. Laugh a laugh of faith because it will it'll, it'll diffuse that. And um, Peter said, um, what did Peter say? Where does Peter say it? I thought I put Peter in here. First Peter chapter three, verse I'll just quote it real quick for you. Verse 8, I think. Whom having not seen you love, though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith. So we rejoice with joy unspeakable. You remember um, Sarah in uh, Genesis chapter 18? She laughed at the promise of God. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> And then Genesis chapter 21, she laughed, a laugh of faith. My God has provided. And so, uh, you know, you can, you can laugh a, a horrible laugh, a mocking laugh to the, what the Lord says or what the Word says. Uh, but if you trust Him, 
you know, Hebrews 11, she's in Hebrews 11, Sarah herself receives, by faith, Sarah herself receives strength to conceive seed. Sarah herself received strength to conceive by faith. So she had a laugh, a mocking laugh. No, no way this will ever happen laugh. Can't ever imagine that laugh. But then in 21, somewhere between 18 and 21, her faith was activated and she had the laugh of faith. And so uh, faith laughs at impossibilities. And, uh, you know, once you've got a number of these under your belt, you've seen the Lord show up, you can laugh. And, you, you know, you should laugh before. A laugh of faith, like, what's the la what are you laughing at? Well, I'm laughing like, I'm not going to let this circumstance get the best of me. Uh, I'm not going to miss God. I, I laugh at the fact that God is bigger than my emotions if I just look to Him. I laugh at the fact that He'll make a way when it seems like there is no way. I laugh at the fact that right now it seems like I have to do this, and this is what must be done. And later, I'm going to look and be like, there were 25 people I could have missed a Sunday and had an enjoyable journey with my daughter. Instead of like, we got to go. We had so many hamburgers. I'm like trying to drive, stay awake. I'm like, you know, that was such a mess. Yeah. You ever do that? Don't, maybe don't do that. But I smack myself to stay awake, you know. And then when it doesn't work, you have to hit yourself harder until it stings enough. You know, stay awake. I'm trying to get there. I have to stop and get fuel. There's no fuel anywhere in Utah, it seems like. My thing says it's going on empty. The lady's store's closing, and she's like, well, I'm closing in five minutes. I don't want to, I'm going to get you. I'm like, please, please, I need the fuel. Like, you don't know. I've already spent much time. It's running late. I fill it up. Find out, like, six years later, the fuel gauge on my truck is inaccurate, and I had a half a tank when it showed empty. <laughs> So sometimes the thing that you stress about that now the fuel has been far spent isn't even an accurate picture. Praise the Lord for His mercy because we've all done stupid stuff and uh, could have been killed because of it, but the Lord have mercy on us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, well, um, Jesus is Lord. If you have never received Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, He loves you. Uh, Nicodemus said, uh, how can a man enter the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus said, you must be born again or born from above. And uh, the way you do that is you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead and you uh, uh, confess with your mouth. You kind of set a stake, spiritual stake in the ground and say, you know what? I believe that. And uh, I receive Jesus as my Lord. And uh, if you do that, you just confess that or you can pray a prayer to the Lord and say, oh God, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son, that he died on the cross to take away my sins and make me right with you. And I receive Jesus as my Lord and as my Savior. And the second that you do that, uh, you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. You're now a spiritual being and uh, uh, you will hear from the Lord. Uh, he will guide and direct you and lead you as you feed on the word and pray uh, every day. Uh, if you prayed that prayer, uh, let us know. Um, or if you're going to pray that prayer as soon as we're done here, uh, please let us know. You can uh, fill out the form online or send us an email, info at anchordc.org. Love to see you here on Sunday mornings at 1030 in the gym at uh, Oakton Elementary School. Uh, we're having a great time. Uh, the Lord's really moving. It's, it's, uh, I'm learning a lot, and uh, we're enjoying the presence of the Lord. And so uh, if you have a need, uh, pray and ask the Lord. He will uh, hear your prayer, answer your prayer. But if you want us to agree with you, come over here. We'll, we'll be happy to do that and uh, join with us. God bless you. Have a great night.